Hey guys, welcome to our vodcast on sexual reproduction. Uh, in this vodcast, what we'll do is we'll go over the three characteristics of sexual reproduction. We'll talk about the different terms that are used to describe the events and, and cells involved in sexual reproduction. And then we'll just briefly touch on some development and what happens after fertilization occurs. So first things first, let's just take a closer look at this diagram that we have up in the upper left-hand corner with the two people in it. All right, so if we take a look at this diagram up here, we have uh, two, two adults, so we have a male and we have a female, and then we have uh, what are called sex cells or gametes, so the fancy word for sex cells is gametes. So here we have the male gamete and we have the female gamete, and then at this point where these two come together and join, we have the process of fertilization, and then we have this thing called the zygote here. And then after the zygote appears, we see that mitosis begins. And then we see that this one cell thing becomes a ball of many cells. And then over the course of time, through a process of differentiation, this ball of cells becomes an offspring or a child. So we're going to go over what some of these words mean and what some of these symbols mean and, and whatnot. So let's kick off with the three characteristics of sexual reproduction. First thing we see here is that we have two adults. We have a male and a female. So in sexual reproduction, there are two parents that are required. And the reason why you need two parents required, or the reason why there are two parents that are required, is because uh, sexual reproduction also involves the use of gametes, as we said, which are sperm and egg cells. So if we take a look here, in order to get a sperm cell, that gets developed or that gets produced by the male. So that's why you need to have one male partner in sexual reproduction. And then the female contributes the egg. So that's why you have a, that's why you need a female partner. So this is why you need two parents in sexual reproduction, because you have to get a sex cell from each one of those parents. Okay, and then lastly, the offspring. Uh, offspring will have the characteristics from both mom and dad. So they're going to have what are called shared traits because what ends up happening is this. Dad is going to have 50% of all of his DNA get put into the sperm cell. So he's only going to give half of that. So there's 50% missing that he's not giving, but 50% that he is. Same thing with mom. Mom's only given 50% of her DNA too. So there are some traits that are involved in this egg and there are other traits that are not. But what ends up happening is during fertilization, these two uh, combine. So the male character, dad's characteristics are going to go into the egg with mom's characteristics. And as a result, we now have a mixture of dad's characteristics and mom's characteristics. Okay, so that's why the offspring will have characteristics from mom and dad. So let's start filling out our notes here. All right, sexual reproduction involves two parents, which, which means the offspring has or has shared traits. So as I said, because you get some of dad's DNA or half of dad's DNA and because you get half of mom's DNA, you might have heard like an adult or a relative say to you like, oh, you have your mom's eyes, your dad's smile, your mom's hair, uh, your dad's nose. Uh, you sound like your dad, you sound like your mom and so forth. So the reason why you have this mixture of characteristics is because you over here are a mixture of of your parents' traits, okay? So that's the first thing. Second thing, sex cells, which we call gametes, are haploid. Haploid simply means, it sounds like real fancy, but it simply means half. So that's how I always remember it. Haploid means half, and this is what I mean. When we learn about mitosis, we learn that human cells have 46 total chromosomes. So you are comprised of 46 chromosomes, all right? When we do, when meiosis occurs, which we'll learn about later, okay, when sp uh, sperm cells or egg cells are, are formed, what we end up finding out is each one of these cells only has half the amount. And that's represented by the letter N. Whenever you see that sign N, that means haploid, okay? So we notice that the sperm cell and the egg cell only have 23 because remember, we have to equal 46. So when these two come together during fertilization, we're going to have 46 chromosomes combined. So the sex cells have to be half or haploid. So don't forget, haploid means half. All right. Next, sexual reproduction includes sex cells that are produced by the male sex cell, the sperm cell. And that's produced in an organ called the testicles, or testes for short. All right, so the sperm cell is that little little cell there. It's got the flagellum or the tail attached to it to help it swim through the female reproductive tract to go find the egg. And as I just said, the female sex cell is the egg cell, and that's produced by the ovaries of females. And those are reproductive structures found, um, you know, outside the fallopian tubes, which we'll get to a little bit later. All right, the process where both sex cells join is called fertilization, and they produce a fertilized egg called a zygote. All right, so as we took a look here, so why don't we zoom in a little bit closer? 
As you can see in this diagram here, we see that the egg goes here, we see the sperm cell goes here, and they meet at about this point. This point here is going to represent fertilization. That's where the two meet. So as we said before, the 23 from the chromosomes from dad and 23 chromosomes from mom are going to combine together to form the 46, and that 46 is gonna go into the zygote. All right, the zygote is just simply put, the fertilized egg. That's all it is. It's just a, a fancy way for saying fertilized egg. All right, when we come back down here, we see the zygote is diploid, which means it has all of its chromosomes, okay? So diploid, I remember as double. So that's what I'll write over here, best I can. Diploid is double or I sometimes remember it as all. And let me explain that in a moment. So let's, why don't we zoom on back and take a look at our diagram again. So when we took a look at haploid, we saw that haploid was, set, was um, characterized or symbolized by the letter N. When we see diploid here, diploid is 2N. So that's what diploid means. All right, so I always remember that diploid was double haploid. So when I saw the 2N, I remember that was double because two times something is double. Also, if I have half of something, when I double the halves, that means I get a whole. All right, so when something is diploid, that means it has all of its chromosomes. So the diploid number for humans is 46 chromosomes. All right, the haploid number for humans, so this would be 2N, the haploid number for humans is 23, okay? So just remember, when the two cells, the sperm cell and the egg cell meet, create the zygote, now we have all of our chromosomes, we've doubled the amount of chromosomes, we are now diploid. All right, so hopefully that makes some, makes some sense to you. All right, then after fertilization, what ends up happening is the egg carries out mitosis, as we said here. So once we see that the, the uh, zygote is formed, mitosis begins because now it has all the instructions it needs to make all the cells it has to. And then we notice that the cells then goes from a, a, a single cell here, a zygote, to a ball of multiple cells. So this is mitosis occurring, creating this ball of multiple cells. And then those cells are gonna go through a process called differentiation. And differentiation is simply the, um, the event where all the cells start to become different types of cells. To become an offspring, you need some cardiac muscle cells for the heart. So some cells become cardiac muscle. You need bone cells for a skeleton. So some of those cells made by mitosis become bone cells. You need nerve cells in the brain and in your nerves. You need blood cells, you need skin cells, you need muscle cells and all that stuff. So all these cells are gonna to start to what we call differentiate, which means they're going to become different cells. All right. So those are the basics of sexual reproduction. All right. Two parents contribute gametes. And when those gametes, the sperm and egg cell meet, that's called fertilization. Now those gametes are haploid. So that means they have half the number of total chromosomes. But when they combine together, they create a zygote, which is now diploid. Once that zygote is formed, it has all the chromosomes and all the instructions it needs. Then it's going to start mitosis. And when mitosis starts, mitosis is going to create a whole bunch of new cells. And as a result, those cells are going to differentiate or become different to create the offspring. All right, so why don't we go touch on uh, development really quickly. So this is what's called the female reproductive system. Here we have the uterus. That's this big structure over here. And then we have like this tube that comes out with some uh, fringed ending ends here. And this is called the fallopian tubes, also known as the oviduct. And then we have this round structure here called the ovary. This is where the eggs are produced in females. So as we see, eggs, immature eggs start to develop over time, over time, over time. And when they get developed enough and mature enough, they are released from the ovary and they go into the fallopian tube. Now inside the fallopian tube, this is where fertilization occurs. So here we have some sperm cells uh, finding the egg and then some, one sperm cell, only one sperm cell will get into the egg. And then once that one single sperm cell gets into the egg, we have a zygote. So once that egg is fertilized and has is now become diploid and has all of its chromosomes, then it's going to start mitosis. So during mitosis, we have a first cell division of two cells, and then we have our second division of four cells, and, and then eight, and then multiple divisions occur where we become a ball of cells here. And then that ball of cells is going to make its way into the uterus, where eventually it's going to implant itself into the uterine lining. And this is where development takes place. So... Um, the, mature, the maturation or the development of this, of this um, what's called a blastula, which will eventually become a gastrula, will eventually turn into an embryo and then a fetus and then 
then that fetus is born. All right, so why don't we take a look at some, what happens after implantation and development occurs. So inside the rep reproductive structure of the, of the female or the, uh, the uterus, sorry, we create or the females create a network of blood vessels called the placenta. And the placenta is the network of blood vessels that connects mom to the baby. So this is where mom gets to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the baby and the baby gets to send out wastes and carbon dioxide. So if we take a closer look here, we'll see that we have vessels that are all wrapped up and intertwined with each other. So in the placenta, the good stuff from mom, the glucose, the amino acids, the, the fats, the oxygen that the baby needs, all will travel through mom's blood, gets transported into baby's blood through the placenta because the blood doesn't mix so it's the baby's circulatory system and vessels all kind of twisted up and wrapped up with mom's circulatory circulatory and vessels and all that oxygen and nutrients diffuse into the baby's blood and then that blood gets delivered into the baby and then the waste that the baby's making in carbon dioxide produced by cell respiration because the cells are making energy get tr uh, carried out away from the away from the uh, baby and it goes out towards the, the placenta and then that stuff will diffuse into mom's blood so mom can breathe out the carbon dioxide and break and filter out the metabolic waste with her kidneys so here's a closer look or a real lit a real look or a real picture of a fetus sitting inside a placenta so this fuzzy stuff around here is the placenta or the blood vessels that are embedded in the uterine wall this is a yolk sac that produces blood cells for the baby because your bone marrow typically produces that. But as you can see, there are no bones here yet. They're forming, but they're not there yet. Here's the umbilical cord that's attached to the placenta and then runs into the belly button of the baby. And that's where all that stuff is delivered and all that stuff is taken out. And then here's our fetus here. You know, here's the head, here's the eyeballs, little nose, little mouth looks like it's being formed there. Our arms, here you can see in the torso, our rib cage is starting to form, okay, and then in the rest of the body. And that concludes our podcast. I hope you found that helpful.